Okay. We have just, in the previous episode, gone and found ourselves some new allies. It was, um, Aveline and her husband, Wesley. Uh, Wesley is a... Oh, jeez, look at this freaking guy. Oh, oh, man, that is terrible. I can't believe the Darkspawn have reached this far so quickly. <laughs> oh, yeah. He is a Templar, and since Bethany is a mage, he is honor-bounder, duty-bounder, some kind of bound to go and sort of either hunt her down or bring her in or kill her or some kind of crap, because mages are believed to be like the most dangerous things in the world in this series. We also learned a few things about where our characters are coming from. Our characters, at least in this, uh, in this version of the events, we have, um, our characters are fleeing the Battle of Ostagar, which is a battle that happened after the origin stories end in the game Dragon Age Origins. Uh, it was a battle where the king of Ferelden went and tried to lead an army against the Darkspawn, and... Well, it didn't go that well. His plan was reasonably well thought out and all that kind of stuff, and it probably would have succeeded. But one of the king's advisors betrayed him during the battle and never sent the flanking wave in to attack the Darkspawn from the side. So, well, the um, battle was unsuccessful. The king was killed, and uh, it didn't really work out all that well. Alright, let's uh, get Bethany some level up this going on here. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Carver leveled up also, so he has a um, double hand warrior, uh, so he strength is the most important thing for this guy. So, let's build up his strength, two-handed, mighty blow, shabam. Almost hit exit game. <laughs> After the battle was lost, a lot of the soldiers fled. A whole bunch of them didn't really survive the encounter, so, you know, I should consider it lucky that they got out. Aha! There's a dead person. Are they attacking from that end too? Ah, eh, they took care of it. What? It's always more. Bethany's really kicking ass here. I don't need most of this crap. I'm gonna take it anyway. Oh, look at that. We have a, uh, we have an emissary. They are dark spawn that are capable of, like, doing magic and kind of crap. <laughs> Kick the bottle. See how many of these I can take before they get here. I could choose to play. I could. Press towards the wilds. I could choose to play as any of the other characters. Bethany with her magic, all that kind of crap. When we get into the next fight, I'm going to play as Bethany, so you can see what playing as a mage is like. Let me have a look at that. There isn't even any animation for opening the chest. Jeez, they really cut a lot of corners in making this game, didn't they? Where's the dog? Oh, there he is. Looks <laughs> like this is a pathway up, doesn't it? It's not, though. 
Oh, everybody leveled up. The character of Aveline has joined our uh, that just joined our group. Notice that she has uh, her stats are she's a warrior as well, but her stats are a little bit more spread out than Carver's are because Carver is well. I mean, at least with the weapons he was given in the beginning of the game, a um, dual hand, a two-handed weapon warrior, whereas Aveline is a sword and shield warrior, meaning she's not an offensive character, she's a little bit more defensive. She's capable of taking a lot more damage, but not as capable of dealing the damage. Notice the DPS for her is 13, his is 15. And that's just how the stats work out, and how the weapons that they carry work out. Of course, I'm pretty sure I can go and give Aveline a Two, uh, two-handed weapon if I wanted to. But I'm going to stick with the sword and shield warrior uh, set up with her because we're going to need them in this game. Uh, so, pretty much the same thing. Um, constitution is important because a sword and shield warrior is going to be taking a lot of def uh, damage. She'll be having a shield, so we'll give her a shield bash. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. No, something else. All of the characters are going to have a sort of friendly friendship and rivalry setup. This is uh, Hawk, so she doesn't have one. But Bethany, friend, way up there. Carver, rival, way down there. Aveline, somewhere in the middle. Now, the way it's described, and I can't say for sure whether I believe this is the way it actually works out or not. But the game isn't really set up to have it sort of be a relationship meter in the sense of this person likes you more this way or less that way if you go all the way up or down the relationship meter. A person who is considered your rival can still be considered um, like a faithful, faithful companion. Unlike in Dragon Age Origins, where a person way down on that slider is a person who's likely to either betray you at some point or leave your group or something like that. That'll never happen here. And in fact, when you get towards the end of the game, a character that you have pushed way in the rival uh, direction will still stand by your side, whereas a person in the middle won't, you know. So, if you're going to go with a character... Uh, make choices based on what decisions and all that kind of stuff for, um, for the relationship meter, you're either going to want to stick with it. You're going to want to go all the way down to rival or all the way up to friend friendly. So don't hang around in the middle. That is an ogre! Get out of its way! Oh, shit. <laughs> Ogres are brutal monsters who are, um, canari, basically, that were... Okay, yeah, here we go. That were lar- that were canari, large horned people who are, like, ridiculously vengeful or violent and all that kind of stuff. Carver's down. Uh, Bethany's taken out the ogre. Bethany, it's, uh, it's Aveline, not Bethany. <laughs> so, they are basically the most dangerous of the regular kind of dark spawn you encounter. You're not going to run into too many of them, though. I'm sorry, mistress. My son is gone. No. These things will not take Carver. Maybe we should grieve when we're safe. Don't speak to me of grief. This is your fault. How could you let him charge off like that? Your little brother. My little boy. Mother, we can't stay here. Carver wouldn't want his sacrifice to be meaningless. 
Allow me to commend your son's soul to the Maker, Mistress. Ashes we were, and ashes we become. Maker, give this young man a place at your side. Let us take comfort in the peace he has found in eternity. I will never forget you, Carver. Our lives are more valuable to him than our prayers. Let's go. Flames. We're too late. Regardless of what we did or how we went about the game, it was always going to be a situation where Carver dies. Or at least somebody was going to die. It didn't actually have to be Carver. Seems they arrive in hordes. I don't know what you are, but I won't let you harm us. Let me. If I wished you harm, I dare say you could not stop me. If you wish to flee the Darkspawn, you should know you are heading in the wrong direction. Wait! You can't just leave us here! Can I not? I spotted the most curious sight. A mighty ogre vanquished. Who could perform such a feat? But now my curiosity is sated and you are safe for the moment. Is that not enough? You could show me that trick of yours. That looks useful. <laughs> if only a clever tongue was all one needed. Tell me, clever child. How do you intend to outrun the Blight? We need to get to Kirkwall, in the Free Marches. Kirkwall? My, but that is quite the voyage you plan. Your king will not miss you, hmm? King Caelan was betrayed. There's nothing for me here. I see. Hurtled into the chaos, you fight, and the world will shake before you. Is it fate or chance? I can never decide. It appears fortune smiles on us both today. I may be able to help you yet. There must be a catch. <laughs> there is always a catch. Life is a catch. I suggest you catch it while you can. Maybe we shouldn't trust her. I don't even know what she is. I know what she is. The Witch of the Wilds. Some call me that. Also Flemeth. Asha Bellinar. An old hag who talks too much. <laughs> Does it matter? I offer you this. I will get your group past the Horde in exchange for a simple delivery to a place not far out of your way. Would you do this for a Witch of the Wilds? 
What is a witch of the wilds exactly? A chastened legend. Witches that steal children. Bah, as if I had nothing better to do. You're an apostate? Yes, just like you. You would go through all that trouble to have something delivered? I have an appointment to keep. It is far more convenient this way. Happily, you are not without your own needs. How much trouble will this delivery be exactly? About as much trouble as my saving your lives, not five minutes ago. Good point. <laughs> if you knew my daughter, you'd know how seldom I hear that. Should we trust her? Wesley is injured. We'll never escape the Darkspawn. If you need to, leave me behind. No. I said I would drag you out if I had to, and I meant it. We don't have much choice. We never do. There is a clan of Dalish elves near the city of Kirkwall. Deliver this amulet to their keeper, Marathari. Do as she asks with it, and any debt between us is paid in full. Before I take you anywhere, however, there is another matter. <coughs> no, leave him alone. What has been done to your man is within his blood already. You lie! She's right, Aveline. I can feel the corruption inside me. What are you talking about? From the dark spawn. All that blood. I knew... when it happened. And how much time before you? Not long now, if I am any judge. We can't afford that kind of liability. No! The only cure I know of is to become a Grey Warden. And they all died at Ostagar. Not all, but the last are now beyond your reach. Aveline, listen to me. You can't ask me this. I won't. Please. The corruption is a slow death. I can't. He's your husband, Aveline. I can't decide his fate. Without an end, there can be no peace. It gets no easier. Your struggles have only just begun. Flemeth! I thought that might interest you. You expect me to believe a myth swooped out of the wild to save the champion? Oh, come now, Seeker. Do I need to recite the tale of the Warden as well? No. Perhaps I shouldn't be surprised to hear of her involvement. I liked my version better, too. What else aren't you telling me, then? Did she send someone with the champion? In a matter of speaking. So it's true. Continue. But if you tell me they all flew to Kirkwall on a dragon... Nothing so fanciful, I assure you. The witch kept her word. And got them to Guaran, where they took ship. 
They sailed north across the waking sea, lashed by terrible storms. Two weeks they spent in that dark hold, packed in with the fearful and the desperate. And then they saw it. Kirkwall, the city of chains. Long ago it was part of the Imperium, slaves coming from far and wide to work the quarries. Now, it's a free city, but I use the word loosely. Sail through those black cliffs and you'll see what the slaves of old saw. The gallows, welcoming you. That's where their ship landed, with all the rest.